A warm hello to our guests and the viewers today. Thank you for joining us on Superdrug TV. Can you please introduce yourselves before we begin? Sure. Uh, my name is Ryan Walner. I work for Athena Health on the DevOps engineering team on the uh, private cloud team. And I'm Kevin Schoenemann. I'm also with Athena Health on the DevOps team building a private cloud. Great. So we're here to talk about a really interesting topic, which is OpenStack on containers. So could you share some insights as to why you chose to go that direction with, with your OpenStack cloud? Yeah, I'll take a stab at that one. So we initially started at, at Athena by deploying OpenStack using Marantis Fuel. And we found some limitations around how the network was deployed. And so when we start looking at other options for deploying OpenStack, uh, Cola came up as being an interesting option because it was basically network agnostic. You could deploy your own network in any way you want, and you just put the containers on top to run the application or to run OpenStack. Yeah, and I would kind of second that in the sense that you know, we as a company at Athena Health are really moving towards containerizing a lot of things, actually, not just infrastructure, but applications as well. And so we kind of have this grand uh, vision for you know, everything being a container and even running you know, OpenStack on top of other container times and orchestration systems. Great. So, so those people that are watching, if someone wants to follow in your footsteps, how did you get there? Like, so could you walk us through like, maybe the high-level architecture and some of the steps that you took to get to a containerized deployment with Cola Images? Yeah, sure. I mean, so you know, I'll talk about kind of the logical entities of the containers themselves. So we started off really with experimenting with Cola. You know, we were both new to the project, so we really wanted to get a sense of how it's being used to deploy, um, what the containers look like, what the Docker images are like, seeing how we want to you know, modify it. So you know, we run OpenStack on a bunch of you know, Dell servers on bare metal. So we have automation around deploying those servers. Um, and we use Ansible extensively already just for getting those servers kind of ready for OpenStack themselves. So Ansible was a really good fit when we chose Cola. Um, so after kind of testing with Cola uh, for a bunch, we switched to deploying it on bare metal. Um, and I don't know, you know, we had a few different network architectures that we used. I think, you know, that was, you know, already there by the time I joined Athena Health. So I don't know, maybe you could talk to a little bit about that. About the network architecture? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first we started with just plain old layer two VLAN networking and that worked great to start with. And then when we want to, you know, scale that up, we need to go to more of a spine and leaf fabric. And so most of the, you know, stock deployers just don't support a spine and leaf network and run it to the host. Um, so that's where, where we're working on, you know, using containers to do that with. Yeah, Cola gave us a lot of flexibility. So it's pretty much bare metal and containers running OpenStack and all our workloads for developers running on OpenStack. That's great. So it sounds like networking was a big part of the decision to go this route. What are some of the challenges? They could be operational, they could be, you know, uh, just learning curve. Like, what are the growing pains to moving towards the direction you moved in? Yeah, so I mean, I could talk a little bit about some of the challenges. I think those are some of the more interesting stories. Um, you know, we moved from a flat VLAN network to the spine leaf architecture, as Kevin said, the, actually in the last few months. Um, and we wanted to move all the routing to the host, so that's you know, putting the fabric addresses on the loopback interfaces. And so Cola gave us a lot of flexibility there, but it also was opinionated in ways, meaning you know, the way Ansible reads and gets IP addresses from uh, Ansible fax are opinionated in the sense that they didn't necessarily work with the way we put IP addresses on the loopback. Um, and so there was a bunch of kind of you know, instrumental ways and challenges around just getting the fabric to work and, and having it on the host and deploying Quagga in a container. But then with Cola, it was another challenge, right, to say, you know, let's make Cola work with this deployment. And it was actually, I think, once we found out it, how it worked, it, it was kind of nice that Cola was nice and flexible. Yeah, and I would kind of echo that too. Like, you know, the we had the technical side, but then we also had the process side, right? So we had, you know, um, you know, coming from a very siloed company, we even still have, you know, a whole networking team dedicated to the network. And so helping and bringing them on board to like make sure that their vision and our vision is realized within the network as well for the infrastructure, um, that's been really helpful. And also a challenge too, because they're doing things in a different way than how we would do it. But we learn from each other. Hopefully we can grow and become one infrastructure body. Yeah. <laughs> so 
you obviously threw out you know a lot of technology technological details about how you're moving and the direction you're moving. When you're when you're starting, what, what were some of the ways you learned? Like, could you share? Like, did you use documents or how did you enhance your knowledge around you know what you're consuming? Just curious. Yeah. So. You know, the way that we kind of consumed and learned about these technologies, we, we did have some background in OpenStack, background in Docker, um, and I think, you know, the, in terms of using the community really helped. We jumped on IRC to uh, get in touch with the COLA community to really learn about, you know, simple questions to also harder questions to learn about, you know, what how the containers were doing a certain thing where, you know, all, all of it being open source helps. But then having people who uh, have done this in the community already helped a lot. Uh, so those, those resources at least personally helped me a lot uh, in the journey, I guess. Yeah, and, and the documentation. I mean, just the, the sheer amount of documentation that what there is around the COLA project, <laughs> that helped a lot. Because I mean, if you guys are digging into the code to try to figure out how to do all that stuff, it would have taken us much longer than what, what, you know, than what the documentation provided. And there's been a, a, you know, a number of instances where you know, we kind of come up against an issue where we can contribute back to, say, Colo, or maybe there's an opportunity where we wanted to fork uh, because we hit an issue where we want to do that. But, you know, I think being part of the community it gives us that sense of, no, let's definitely not do that. So let's contribute back uh, whenever we can. And we really kind of appreciate that sense as well to give back to the community. Yeah, I totally agree on that one. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So in closing, um, what's next? Yeah, what's next? That's a big, big question. I think, so our OpenStack deployments have been expanding a lot at Athena Health. So we're really in that initial deployment, kind of making sure things can scale, uh, making sure we're going to have a good upgrade plan and day two operations for OpenStack. Um, and, and we, you know, fully, I think, I think, you know, realize that COLA is the way forward. We really like working with it. It's been really helpful to, uh, you know, kind of expand single compute nodes, single single Ceph nodes, Cinder nodes, it's been really nice to work with that. So expansion number one, and I'd say in the future, we, you know, we have the container orchestration platforms like uh, DCOS where you know, the COLA community has already been working towards deploying OpenStack on Kubernetes. It's really a very similar thing for DCOS. Right. Yeah, and then top of that, uh, on top of the container orchestration is just applying DevOps and CI/CD process to our infrastructure. You know, we talked about that a lot, and that's definitely on a roadmap in the next very soon. We want to get into testing, you know, doing infrastructure as code to make sure we're, you know, writing the code right and it's doing the right things and testing all that, deployments and upgrades and all that good stuff. Yeah, and going multi-region too in multiple data centers rather than just <laughs> one, expanding one data center. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks right, thank for having you. us.